What's up, beautiful ladies and handsome men? I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to it. Hi, everybody. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another old Hollywood scandals video. And today, I am repping my best friend. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for those of you who want to learn. But you know what? Let's scratch out. Really, Skillshare is something where you can invest in yourself. If you want to be something and you need the extra skill to do it, Skillshare is where you need to be. And they have so many classes for you to choose from. Look at the screen. I'm putting them up again. Now, I myself am taking a class. And this class is called Find Your Style. Five exercises to unlock your creative identity. And I know y'all are like, Ashley, you already got your creative identity. But I am starting another channel about gruesome stories, true crimes, and things like that. I can't be talking about folks dying and getting stabbed and stuff and talking like this. That's a whole nother creative identity that I need to find. And that is what I'm doing. I am investing in myself. I offer this to y'all every Every single month and I'm offering it to you again the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get one month free of Skillshare y'all keep missing it y'all keep missing it stop missing it and go signed up you get one month free doggone it hi everybody this is Ashley with Ashley says so and I am back with another old Hollywood scandals video and our star of today's video is Miss Opulence Prime baby you be making some wicked comments honey and I love reading them and now we have to do our member shout outs your once twice three times a member and i love you i hope y'all enjoyed my song don't ask me why i do what i do i just do what i do anyways today we are going to talk about the very talented very unique and very smart behind mouth Miss Pearl Bailey. Let's get to it. Dick Bailey was born on March 29th, 1918 in Newport News, Virginia. And no, I'm not being funny. Gossip claims that when Pearl Bailey came out of her mother, her name was Dick because her parents thought that they were having a boy. So everybody was saying Dick, Dick, Dick until the doctor actually held the baby up and was like, no, you guys have a daughter. And so that is when they came up with the name Pearl May. In fact, per rumor, because of this, Pearl's nickname her whole time growing up was Dickie. Now, Pearl's mother's name was Ella Mae Ricks Bailey and her father's name was Reverend Joseph James Bailey. And on top of little Pearl May, the Baileys had several other children and one of those children was the famous dancer Bill Bailey. Honey, y'all know Bill, the person that they say that Michael Jackson stole the moonwalk from? Mm. And also, I'm getting tired of Michael Jackson. His name's starting to pop up just like Bobby Womack. But anyways, when Pearl was around four years old, her father, the Reverend, picked up his whole family and moved them all to Washington, D.C. because there was this huge church congregation and honey, they just needed the good Reverend to lead the flock. But baby, the folks say that he was leading his family at home straight to hell, honey. And that's because he and his wife, Ella Mae, used to fight all the time. And I don't know if this was actual uh, physical fighting, but I do know that they used to cut each other down. So this made life hell for Pearl and her siblings. Eventually, Pearl's mom got tired of this toxic mess so she took her children and she left and went to Philadelphia and that is where she met a man that she thought was her Prince Charming but then when she married him the cracks started to show. Prince Charming had some Prince cheating ways about him and not only that he had much less money than her first husband. Since their stepdad wasn't bringing in much money at all not only did Pearl's mother have to work Pearl and her siblings also had to work. And Pearl did her duty by cleaning rich white people's houses in order to bring money in. But while Pearl and some of her other siblings were cleaning, her brother Bill was walking around talking about some, y'all stupid, I wish I would clean somebody's house for money. Uh-uh, I'm using my feet for money. And he was not lying. Bill by this time was dancing so well that he had found a way to start performing at the Pearl Theater. Well, of course, when Pearl heard about this, she also wanted to start performing at the Pearl Theater, but she did not know if she was talented enough. But when an amateur talent show came around Pearl gets up there and kind of shyly shakes her shimmy you know she sings her song and by the time she's done the audience is up on their feet and in Pearl's mind a new star was born because honey not only did she win the talent show she also won the grand prize of being paid $35 a week to perform at the theater for two weeks and child Pearl ain't seen a dime of it them folks say that when Pearl came back to the theater to perform her two weeks baby Pearl and the audience was standing outside looking because the theater had closed down. 
Baby said that Pearl was heartbroken, honey. She had already like picked out little stuff she was gonna buy with her little $35. Child, them folks had set Pearl up. And so Pearl started to look for more amateur nights and more talent shows for her to perform. And somebody told her about the Apollo Theater. And Pearl went to the Apollo Theater, and I'm not sure if she won that talent show or not, but still, it was a great way to get her name, her face, and her voice out to the public. And it just so happened that some of the performers that night were a part of a vaudeville circuit, and they wanted Pearl to join them, and that's what she did. She also started crafting her own solo show by singing in several nightclubs. Now this nightclub singing thing introduced Pearl to a whole new world because nightclubs back in the 1930s were very uh, gritty, grimy, and Pearl Bailey found herself in a room full of grown men who used to grab at her, rub her, touch her, and there was this one young black drummer who was touching on Miss Pearl in multiple places because Pearl thought the boy was fine. Pearl never gave a name for this guy, but she did say that she met him, she fell in love with him, and so she ended up getting married to this drummer uh, when she was 18 years old. But allegedly this man was looking for a homemaker type of wife and he didn't like the fact that Pearl wanted to go to these nightclubs and sings and basically he didn't like the fact that she was doing what he met her doing. Um F-R-E-E-F Iga Free. That me that's basically the way that Pearl responded to her husband. She ended that marriage right quick and fast and went right back singing in these nightclubs like she had been doing. Problem was though, when nobody trying to come out and see no black bombshell because they were scared of black bombshells, like real black black bombshells because World War II had started. So not only were a lot of the audiences in fear for their lives and staying at home, uh, since most of the audience was male, a lot of them had been drafted into the military. Now this whole thing was terrible for Pearl because she already wasn't making a lot of money, now the little money that she was making was gone. But she was a smart girl and so she figured if most of her audience were off at war, then shoot, she'll just go off to war with them. And that's when she signed up for the USO, which basically meant she signed up to travel and entertain the troops while they were at war. And this was great for Pearl. She was able to travel, see new places, meet new people, but there also was a downside to all of this fun. You see, where Pearl grew up, it was basically like a full black community. You know what I'm saying? So she had never really experienced really harsh racism right in her face. Well, while she was in the USO, baby, racism was served up to her daily. And honey, they say that one time Pearl Bailey wanted to put the hands on this certain white singer. Cause Pearl say, you know, she just standing around. I don't know if she's eating, playing checkers. I don't know what she was doing, but apparently everybody was just standing around. And all of a sudden they started hearing these ear piercing screams. <laughs> I'm talking about the woman just screaming like she in a horror movie. So all these white troops come running through, you know what I'm saying? They pushing Pearl out the way, pushing everybody out the way. They got to go see what's going on with this woman. Honey, they get up to the door and they see a black man is asleep in this woman's bed. This man ain't done nothing. He just went into what he thought was his room and he fell asleep in the bed. As a matter of fact, they did all the checks and everything they needed to see and they saw that the military messed up and told this man this was his room when in fact it was actually the dressing room of this white singer. But get this though, the folks say that even after the man left the room, the woman still sitting up there shaking and shivering and you know, oh my god and doing all this kind of stuff until they removed the bed out of the room. Only then could she relax because the bed that the black skin was laying on was now out of the room. Honey say Pearl wanted to strangle that doggone woman. But baby, if Pearl thought she was upset over that, the next thing that was about to happen to her, show sure enough must have had her 38 hot. Now baby, I guess Pearl performing in front of all of those troops and these big large crowds must have made her feel like she was a big time star or something, I don't know. But she definitely thought that she was big enough and recognizable enough that when Frank Sinatra ended up coming to the city that she was in, which was New Jersey, when he came to the city to put on a show, Pearl felt like, you know, she wanted to go into the club and see the show. Baby say that Pearl put on her best dress and she walked through the front doors of the club. Folks whispering to each other, what is Blackie doing here? Honey said Pearl ignored all of the whispers and went and sat down in the front row of the show and looked around like, you know, I'll show you Whitey. Blackie is here to catch a show just like all of y'all. But baby, I guess as them white folks were staring daggers at the back of her head, uh, Pearl felt like the pressure was too much, honey. So they say that she tried to get up sweetly and walk towards the front door to leave. Honey, they say that Pearl was almost at the door when two white men came out of nowhere and bust Pearl all upside her head. After about 30 seconds, Pearl got loose and then she took off running for the back of the club. Said that one of 
of them white men keg pearl up and finish the job, honey. And I suppose that after this beating, the two white men must have run off because I do know that the police did end up coming to the club and they were uh, trying to make a report and they were asking Pearl, you know, who beat you up? Was it two white men that beat you up? And Gossip claims that Pearl was like, look, you know, I don't care if the men were purple. The fact of it is, is that they beat me up. And some people try to act confused by this story. Like, you know, why wouldn't Pearl just straight up tell him that it was two white men? It doesn't confuse me at all. Pearl Bailey was trying to make herself agreeable. And there were a lot of blacks at that time in show business who did want to make themselves agreeable because they felt like if they didn't kick up a lot of dust, that was the only way that they could really become something in show business. And I hate to say it, but they were not lying. Back at that time, you either played the game or you were blackballed and kicked out of show business, period. But anyway, although Pearl was dealing with this racist mess, there was something, honey, that put a big smile on her face. Them doggone soldiers, baby. <laughs> Cha! Say that Pearl found her a fine one, baby. Look so good at her. And thankfully, this soldier boy felt the same way about Pearl. So it wasn't long before the two was married. And everything was good for a while, but then the war ended and soldier boy wasn't no soldier no more. And he didn't know how to deal with regular real life. Now he didn't have no guaranteed pay coming to him. Now he didn't have nobody looking at him all big and mighty as a soldier anymore. And he was just a regular man with a wife who had to try to go out and make his own life, find his own money. And he just found the regular way of life too stressful for him. So baby, they said that one day he was sitting down looking at the side of Pearl's head and when she turned around to look back at him, baby said the man had disappeared in the night and this one here was said to have really hurt Pearl because she really cared about this guy but she soldiered on. Now, as I stated before, Pearl at this time was rumored to have been living in New Jersey, but as she tried harder and harder to build her career, she realized that New York was where she needed to be. When she got to New York, she started to audition at several jazz clubs, and before long, Pearl Bailey was booked and busy. Oh, she sang it all of them, honey, and not only was she entertaining black crowds, she was also entertaining mixed black and white crowds, and then sometimes full all-white crowds. And in these mixed and all-white crowds, there were a lot of big wigs in the audience. One night there were some Columbia big wigs in the audience and they offered Pearl Bailey a recording contract. So sis was finally making her way but soon she found out that sometimes you have to do some scandalous things in the name of art. Now baby the year was 1946 and Pearl was a signed entertainer but she was still making her way. She hadn't really found herself yet like her niche of setting her apart and Pearl was told that she needed to change that especially when she was looked at for a role in a play called St. Louis Woman on Broadway. And so if you wanted to catch a producer or director's attention and basically let these people know that you were up for it, then you needed to do things to put on a show to let them know you were up for it. And so Pearl went the way of most of the female stars, especially back then, when she posed for nude photographs. And don't be in the comments talking about some, no she didn't, Pearl was a class act. Yes ma'am, she was a class act, but yes ma'am, she did pose with no doggone clothes on. Her behind wanted to be a star, and this is part of the things that it took to be the star. If you don't believe me, go ahead and click the link in the description. One thing about it though, Pearl's photos did exactly what she wanted them to do. She was now more comfortable with loosening up, you know, she was now more comfortable with uh, finding herself and setting herself apart in show business. There were a lot of sepia skinned high yellow beauties. The pretty girls, you know, who wore diamonds and played the part of a trophy wife on a man's arm. Lena Horns, the up and coming Dorothy Dandridges, the outgoing Freddie Washington. Then you had those jazz ladies like Ella Fitzgerald, Dinah Washington, Sarah Vaughn. And these were women that while they were beautiful, People didn't see them as sexy feminine figures. They didn't see them in the same light that they saw the Lena Horns and the Dorothy Dandridges, you know, so, so Pearl needed to find an in-between, in-between both of these type of women. And when I tell y'all she found it, baby, she found it. See, a lot of people look over the 1940s Pearl Bailey. She wasn't high-pitched voice and she wasn't jazz voice. She was a husky-voiced, brown-skinned Aphrodite who huffed and puffed when she sang. And when she walked by the men in the audience, she wasn't acting like no baby who needed to be taken care of, but instead acted like, listen here, sugar. 
I can do this with or without you, but I'd much rather do it with you. Pearl Bailey enchanted them. She was one of a kind and a big thing child, and you couldn't miss her if you tried. And therefore, Pearl Bailey was a success for the rest of the 1940s, and it even continued on into the 1950s. In fact, by the 1950s, Pearl had to change up her style all over again, because guess what? Movie studios had come calling. Things looked lovely for Pearl Bailey, but then something came trying to knock down her shine. She had met a guy named John Randolph Pinkett, and she and this John Randolph Pinkett got together and got along so well that in 1948, they ended up getting married. Honey, they said that the more that Pearl came into her new identity, that uh, John Randolph Pinkett got meaner and meaner. Started demanding that she quit her job because it was not becoming. Didn't understand why she needed to spend so much time away. Well, as we all know, Pearl was not going to give up her career for anybody. And I guess John Randolph Pinkett was like, so you ain't gonna give up your career? You gonna keep on huffing and puffing in the mic? Child, they say that John Randolph bust that woman upside the head with a telephone and a gun. Bust Pearl head to the white meat. As a matter of fact, it was splashed all across the uh, newspapers because in 1952, Pearl ended up wanting to divorce John Randolph Pickett and she told the newspapers that she was divorcing him because that man had split her school. Once again, she had another failed marriage, but once again, again, Pearl's career was on a move upward. And in 1954, she got a coveted role in an all-black movie called Corman Jones. But baby, you know it's some messy tea behind this. Child said Pearl Bailey kept them eyes just a rolling when it came to Dorothy Dandridge. Said she couldn't stand Dorothy Dandridge. Baby said she was telling everybody that she was sick of these doggone untalented actresses who just had to open up their legs to get a role. Basically, the rumor says that Pearl was just acting very jealous. But let me tell Tell you, not only was Pearl Bailey said to be a B to a uh, Dorothy Dandridge, gossip claims that Pearl Bailey was a B to Diane Carroll as well. In that same year of 1954, Pearl Bailey appeared alongside Diane Carroll in a play called The House of Flowers. Now see, if y'all watched my Diane Carroll video, remember on that video how I told you guys that Diane Carroll was always very classy, very prissy, that's just the type of person that she was. Well, Pearl did not like this at all, and so she looked at Diane Carroll like, you know, who is this young bee coming here like her stuff don't stink? So Pearl would do very trifling things to Diane Carroll because she knew she could. Like, like gossip claims there was this one scene where Pearl and Diane Carroll was on stage and Diane Carroll was supposed to have a solo. She was supposed to sing a song. Well, before Diane Carroll could sing, Pearl would start singing the song. So Diane Carroll would find herself kind of on stage just kind of like dancing around not knowing what to do because Pearl is singing her song. Well, Juanita Hall, an older co-star of theirs, didn't like that. And so she used to come up to the directors and producers and say, you know, why do y'all let Pearl Bailey do that to her? Well, this got back to Pearl Bailey and gossip claims that Pearl Bailey told Juanita Hall, why don't you shut up and mind your business? But see, this ain't got nothing with the way that Pearl Bailey supposedly treated Josephine Premise or Josephine Premise. Honey, they said Pearl Bailey did so many shysty things to that woman, like little underhanded, undercover type things, that uh, Josephine ended up leaving the show. Like she ended up quitting. She couldn't take it anymore. Not only was Pearl Bailey supposedly rude and nasty to her co-stars, gossip claims that Pearl Bailey was nasty with her husband too. See, in 1952, after she had divorced the husband that had bust her upside the head, she ended up getting married to another drummer. This time it was a white drummer, a man by the name of Louis Belson. And Louis Belson used to be a drummer for Duke Ellington. Baby said that Pearl used to be questioning this man, accusing this man so much that Louis Belson would be terrified for another woman to even come up and try to talk to him. Baby, he was scared to even stand beside another woman. He said that if Louis Belson so much as glanced at another woman's way, Pearl Bailey would rip that man apart. It got so bad that Louis Belson ended up quitting the Duke Ellington band. He just said, you know, he'd just stay out of the way and he would just help Pearl with her career. But while Pearl was giving Louis Belson hell, Louis Belson's father was giving Pearl hell. He was very upset that his son had married a black woman. And and the daddy allegedly wrote Pearl a letter and told her, I don't like your black self and I like even less the fact that y'all are trying to give me some half Negro grandbabies. I don't want them grandbabies. I don't want you either. 
Nevertheless, though, Louie and Pearl stayed together until the day that she passed away. Back to Pearl's career though, she was flying high and in 1956, she was asked to perform on the Palladium TV show. In fact, I think she performed on this show several times, but one of those times, Pearl Bailey caused a scandal, honey. Honey, they say Pearl Bailey got up on that stage in front of that TV screen and she was wobbling and singing any kind of way. Then she walked off the stage to the audience, grabbed a man up and started dancing with a man at the audience and she walked off stage to the bathroom, then she came back on stage and then walked off stage and just plopped down in a chair. Miss Pearl Bailey had came on national TV drunk. And honey, Pearl ain't fooled nobody when she showed up across the newspapers the next day laying in the hospital bed, time a, a mysterious illness had taken over her. They took all of these pictures with her husband, Louie, stroking her face, she stroking his face, you know, he's just really hoping that his wife recovers from this illness. Baby girl, you was drunk. A few weeks later, ain't nobody heard nothing else about that doggone illness, cause it didn't exist. Now by the 1960s, Pearl Bailey was a household name, and this was good and bad. Good because of her career, you know, she was very popular, and bad because the civil rights had started and people noticed that when it came to Pearl, her mouth was shut like somebody had sewed it together. And it was weird to some people because she wasn't really saying anything about black race issues, but at the same time, she was being uplifted by politicians. In fact, during the 1960s, Pearl Bailey became the toast of Washington, D.C. So every time you turned around, Pearl Bailey was giving a public show or private shows for several politicians. And a lot of people felt like that the reason these politicians loved Pearl so much is because she was hush mouth on black issues. And not only that, but the fact that Pearl Bailey was a Republican. And so right in front of everybody's eyes, Pearl Bailey is being lifted up like she's this warm, sweet, funny personality, but behind the scenes, a certain group of people knew different. And that was other black entertainers, especially the young and upcoming entertainers. Because honey, Pearl Bailey was truly becoming very difficult behind the scenes. Billy Shorter said that she was mean as a hornet and that she had made several young actresses cry. And these were young actresses who had seen Pearl on screen and who thought that she was like her personality on screen, you know. So they coming up to her thinking she's gonna be a auntie figure, big sister figure, and Pearl is cutting these actresses down. And it's alleged that she would put things in the directors and the producers ears like, you know, I don't know, what y'all think? Y'all think she can really carry the role? Maybe she's just too much of a newcomer. And none of this tops the way that they said that Pearl Bailey was acting when she got the lead role in Hello Dolly. So check me out. Before Pearl Bailey said that she would do Hello Dolly, Maya Angelou was one of the young black women that was up for the lead role. And this is not famous poet and uh, writer Maya Angelou. No, this is young black single mother struggling actress Maya Angelou. She wanted this role with all of her heart because if she got this role, she could stay in New York with her son instead of traveling all around the nation singing in nightclubs like she had been doing. Well, of course, as soon as Pearl Bailey was like, hey, I'll be your dolly, this blows Maya as well as everybody else out of the water. But things are still looking good for Maya Angelou because those directors and producers tell her, hey, you were doing so well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep you on as Pearl Bailey's understudy. So anytime that Pearl Bailey needs to miss a show, if she's sick, whatever, you will be on stage and you will be playing the role of Dolly. So Maya is ecstatic. She goes home dancing, she picks up her son and she tells her son, you don't have to worry about it, baby. Mama don't have to travel no more for a long time because mama is gonna play Dolly when Miss Pearl Bailey can't play Dolly. Honey, Maya Angelou went to their first practice. I guess Pearl Bailey looked over at her and asked one of the directors, could she see them in the back? And I know Maya Angelou was sitting up there looking like a crying Michael Jordan meme, trying to smile through the tears, because baby, they said Pearl was back there calling Maya Angelou fat, black, and ugly. Said that she wouldn't dare have no fat, black, ugly, nasty thing uh, trying to do an understudy for her. Said Pearl Bailey said, I don't even want somebody to look like that to play the same role that I'm playing. I don't want her to be my understudy. That means folks that think that I'm black and ugly and stuff. And Maya Angelou's son said that it broke his mother's heart. But listen, now that I think about it, Maya Angelou kept on getting done wrong, didn't she? Because remember on the Billie Holiday video, Maya Angelou tried to get up on that stage and sing that song to my yeah. Baby, they say Billie Holiday jumped up out that doggone chair and cussed Maya Angelou out. 
But anyways, let's get back to Pearl Bailey. So you see this treatment that Pearl Bailey was doing behind the scenes while wearing a smile in front of the face of the nation was really upsetting a lot of people, though that is why some of them were ecstatic when Lenny Bruce did what he did. Pearl Bailey was putting on a show in Las Vegas and she found out that Lenny Bruce was in the audience, so she called Lenny Bruce on stage with her. What Pearl didn't know is that Lenny Bruce had not been having fun at this show at all. He had not liked one joke that Pearl had told. So she invited Lenny Bruce on the stage and when he got up there, this guy grabbed a fire extinguisher, sprayed Pearl with the fire extinguisher, as well as sprayed some of the people in the audience. Pearl Bailey was humiliated and she was upset and so she went off on Lenny Bruce and she told him to get off her stage. You know, she could not believe that he would behave like that. Lenny Bruce took his behind to his house, sat down at a desk, honey, and wrote a letter to Pearl. And he called her a mother sucking coon, said that she wasn't nothing but a female Uncle Tom and that she ought to be shame of herself and she was an embarrassment to her race. He told Pearl Bailey that the reason that he got up there with that fire extinguisher and did what he did is because he did not like the way that Pearl Bailey was up there telling uh, Uncle Tom type jokes about black folks. And he pretty much let her know that you know he could see that she was putting her own race down just so she could fit in with these white people and honey said that after pearl bailey got that letter she ordered a group of thugs to come and beat the brakes off of lenny bruce child and they said they beat his behind too listen honey when word spread around the show business circuit that this had happened to pearl bailey a lot of folks that she had done wrong got a lot of laughs from it but their laughing and Lenny Bruce did not affect Pearl one bit. Her Hello Dolly show had done very well. And this led to her making several more uh, television appearances. Not only that, her profile continued to grow in the political community. In 1970, she was titled the Ambassador of Love by Richard Nixon. And if you're wondering just what the heck that is, that's what everybody back at that time was wondering too. But that's just how much Pearl Bailey was loved by these politicians. You know, they were making up titles just to give to her. Since her fame was at an all time high in 1971, she was given her own show, The Pearl Bailey Show. So this was the pinnacle of her diva-like ways behind the scenes. And to be quite honest, this is Hollywood. So Pearl could have been as rude and nasty and snappy as she wanted to be. But the problem was, wasn't nobody tuning in to Miss Pearl Bailey's show. So now when she was coming up to the directors and the producers demanding that they rewrite things and she wanted to sing this song, uh, did nobody want to hear that? Because ma'am, you ain't got the numbers. And so Pearl's show was canceled after only four months. After this failure, Pearl was never given another shot at a television show. However, she was still performing. In fact, in 1975, she did Hello Dolly once again. Not only did she do that, she did voiceovers for a couple of cartoons, but the main thing that Pearl Bailey did was continue to entertain the political crowd. And they compensated her very well. She even performed for the Egyptian president. When it was seen that foreign people loved Pearl Bailey just as much as American people, Pearl Bailey was given another title, an ambassador to the foreign nation. She was so loved in politics, Pearl Bailey almost became the uh, face of the Republican Party. She was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Ronald Reagan in 1988. Now, as far as family life, like I said before, she and Louis stayed together till her death, and they also had adopted two children, a daughter named Dee Dee Belson and a son named Tony Belson. Now, there were rumors around the time when Dee Dee Belson was adopted as a baby that she was actually Louis Belson's real child by another woman. But seeing as how Pearl Bailey was obviously very jealous over Louis Belson, it's kind of hard for me to believe that this man was able to step out and create a whole child on Pearl. Now, Pearl Bailey had started to suffer from health problems as early as 1960. And rumor says that Pearl actually had about four heart attacks in total between the year 1960 and 1990. And in July of 1990, Pearl Bailey went in to have surgery on her leg. I believe it was knee surgery. And while she was still recovering from this surgery, she ended up going unconscious in a hotel room. Some reports go as far to say that Pearl Bailey actually passed away in that hotel room, but the official word is that she passed away when she was rushed to the hospital. The date was August the 17th, 1990, and Pearl Bailey was 72 years old. 
And Pearl Bailey really hasn't been remembered as well as some of the other stars of her era. And true enough, she was more of a Broadway star than a film star. But still, I still want to see a movie on her. And yes, I feel like all of y'all, when I say that I would like to see either me or Queen Latif in the role, you know, we all feel like this. Everybody wants to see me or Queen Latifah, you know. So, you know, maybe that'll happen. But anyways, y'all, I gotta go. I gotta work on the next video. Love y'all. Bye.